Okay, so a question that I get asked a lot, and I mean a lot, is which Fujifilm camera represents the best value for money? Now, people are often wanting to get into Fujifilm for the first time, and so the question is, do they jump in, and if this is you, do you jump in in an early model and go for something like this, which is the XM1, or do you kind of go halfway and maybe think about the X-T2 or an X-Pro2, or do you go fully in and go for something like an X-T3, X-Pro3, X-H1, or perhaps what I'm filming on now, which is the X-T4. So there are a lot of options, and in this video, I'm going to, um, yeah, think about these. Let's do it. Before we get into that, very excitingly, and you know, it's made my entire week, my new book is finished. Yes, it's been such a fantastic process, but when you get to the end, there's just so much to do to get it finished, and I'm so glad to have it ready to share with you. And so if you want to pre-order my book, and I would love you to pre-order my book, do click the link below. Um, it's called The Edge of the World, and um, rather funnily, you have the link you have to click is beautyinthewild.click. That's the name of my last book, but also it's the name of the website that I host all my um, things, like my presets, my, um, my previous book, my prints, mentoring, and my new book. They're all there, so do click on that link below, and uh, yeah, pre-order your book today. It ships all over the world. Now, it's, it's out in November, by the way. Now, what do you do? Okay, you want to get a Fujifilm camera and you're not sure which way to go. Do you go for something like an older camera, a newer camera, blah, 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 who knows what to do? Well, I'm gonna go through a few Fujifilm cameras with you and give you some options and really give you my opinion. You can put your opinions in the comments and you can disagree with me to your heart's content and maybe everyone might have their own opinion. Um, and in the end, it's down to you to decide which camera you want to buy. But here's my opinion, okay? Let's start with something like this, the X-M1. Now, let's, give, let's put a few pros and cons on this camera. At the moment, I've got such a big lens on it. This is the um, 56mm 1.2. It's way too big for this, but I sometimes use this camera commercially, um, and so this is a good lens to go on there. Um, and that's a testament to these cameras, you know. This is an early X-Trans 1 Fujifilm sensor. You know, it must be at least 10 years old or so, and it's still good commercially. And that's the great thing about Fujifilm. But anyway, let's go. So this pros for this, it's super cheap. You go now onto a secondhand website and you will find um, this camera will be much, much cheaper than you expect. It's got the <laughs> X-Trans 1 sensor in it. I'm trying to think what else there is as pro about it. It's small, it's lightweight. Really, the best thing about this camera is the fact that it's got that first generation sensor and it's a really small camera, which you can take anywhere. You know, you take this lens off, let's do that. And look, this camera, its footprint is tiny and you can take this thing anywhere. And so really great travel camera, represents really good value for money um, because I love the images from the first Fujifilm sensors. They've got that more film analog style to them. And so you're getting a bit more grain. So that's a pro. The con for me is it's not great indoors. You shoot in low light, you're gonna get a lot more noise. And the autofocus is gonna be slower. And the big thing for me is it's got no viewfinder. So that's a problem if you like looking through a viewfinder. So you think, well, what do you do then? Well, you could go on to the X-E1, still with the same first generation sensor. Absolutely amazing camera. Um, it's downstairs, otherwise I will be holding it now. Um, and uh, yeah, fantastic. It's got the viewfinder. It's got the early X-Trans sensor. Uh, again, it's got slower autofocus, but and it's very small, which is a good, which is a, a plus. Um, by the way, the autofocus though was actually a, a negative, not a plus. Um, and it is, I would say, one of my favourite Fujifilm cameras. 
even though it's really old because because of its size and it's got the viewfinder and because of that amazing sensor you've got what I would consider to be a really incredible camera and again it's really cheap so you know offers you great things now these earlier cameras they won't have the new tech so a question I get asked all the time from people is is the autofocus fast in the early Fujifilm cameras? Because I think we've just come to expect autofocus to be quick, but it's not that quick in the older cameras. You take the X-Pro1, now again, an incredible camera. Black and whites in there are incredible, amazing. I love them. I've got shots from that camera in my new book that's coming out. Did I mention I've got a new book coming out? <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, again, so a fantastic camera, great ergonomics, wonderful camera to hold, to use, to shoot, but again, it's a bit slower. Um, your process, your workflow process will be slower, but the results are astounding. And so again, and again, it's a really cheap camera. These early first generation Fujifilm cameras offer wonderful value for money. In my opinion, if I was buying a camera now and I didn't have any Fujifilm cameras and it wasn't for commercial purposes but for my own purposes I would probably go for a really older first generation um, sensor like maybe or maybe X-Trans 2. Now X-Trans 2 represents great value for money and maybe the best value for money because you've got the X-T1. When the X-T1 came out it was an absolute game changer you know a wonderful camera um, it I've got a video which I'll link somewhere um, you, which you can see um, about that camera and again it, it just offers wonderful commercial results with a great sensor the X-Trans 2 sensor is fantastic um, the X-E2 again has got that sensor in and it's a wonderful camera you know um, small lightweight gives you a bit faster autofocus than the earlier ones but they kind of sorted out some of the noise issues, but not all of them. Um, so you've got some, you know, good midway points. But then I think we move into probably a, the best value for money. And I would say the X-Trans 3 sensor at the moment probably offers the best value for your cash because you start to get into um, the things like the X-T2. Now the X-T2, is like a mini DSLR, it's small, it's lightweight, great commercially, faster autofocus, but still with 24 megapixel camera um, sensor. So you've got a good sensor, you've got a quicker autofocus, um, you've got, I'm not sure what the video is like in that actually, um, but you've got, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's got HD video. And so, you know, you are on the way to a, not a hybrid, but you're on the way to a better, um, camera all round and it'll offer you a good value for money and I'm sure the X-Pro2 will be similar to the X-T2 so you're going to get good value there so when you think about what value is you've got to start thinking well what am I going to do with this camera now I don't want to waffle on all day about, about these cameras but these are the kind of emails I get all the time so it just helps me to say it so people can watch it um, think about things like are you going to shoot video with your stills because if you are in fact there are going to be two categories let's do this let's, let's, let's make up a new rule on the spot two categories one's going to be just stills and the other one is going to be stills and video now if you're going to go stills and video for me co maybe controversially the best value for money would be xt3 I would say X-T4 because it's fantastic and I shoot with it now and the X-T4 in terms of switching between the two is incredible and the camera, the whole camera I love, it's one of my favourite Fujifilm cameras but it's much more expensive than the X-T3 so value for money, you, with the X-T3 you've still got, you've got the X-Trans 4 sensor, you've got the the same autofocus as the X-T4 now, I think with the firmware upgrade, and you've got um, the 4K video, um, you've got, you just, you just don't have the image stabilization in the in body. Um, so it's gonna be a toss up between the two, but I'd say generally, probably value for money for the video would be X-T3. If you've got the cash to spend a bit more and you want the image stabilization, X-T4 all day for me. Um, if it's just stills, 
I would put myself somewhere around about the X-Trans 3 sensor because they're really cheap at the moment and you can get yourself an X-E3 or an X-T2 and they've got that beautiful sensor in, it's 24 megapixels um, and for just a few hundred pounds, probably like 400 pounds or something, you can get yourself um, an absolutely brilliant camera and it will do you uh, maybe faster autofocus, it will be um, it'll have some of the more up-to-date um, uh, film simulations, obviously not the most up-to-date but a lot of them will be in there, um, it will have um, some, some good video um, but it will have a great sensor even indoors you'll have an imp imp improved over the first two sensors so if you put yourself somewhere around that legacy of the X-Trans 3 you're probably going to get the best value for money so I would say my option would be X-T2 and I guess X-Pro or X-E3 X-Pro2 they're all the same sensor somewhere around there for your stills and then for stills and video I would choose the X-T4 but for value for money you'd probably go for the X-T3 because you'll get um, more for your money um, so round about there I would say it would be my um, my choice now this whole thing can blow completely open because you've got so many options and you're going to have your opinions if you're not shooting commercially but you're shooting just family you know you can go back to this and start with this and what I often say to people is you know and I'm sorry if this is coming over quite crazy but it is one of those topics that is quite crazy um, with a lot involved in it and I get so many emails about it that I'm always having to think through it one of the great things about starting here and I often say to people on my when I'm replying you know go back to the early Fujifilm cameras start with your XM1 start with the next E1 because you're your risk factor is so low because you're only spending maybe a couple of hundred pounds on your on on the body, and then from there or two three hundred dollars, and from there you can say you know what it is or it isn't for me, and if it is, then you can start to um, invest more in the um, in the system. So there you have it. That's my opinion. Do let me know yours, and I would love for you to put your opinion down there because so many people email me. I'm sure they'll want to see your opinions and get. Um, other people's uh, perspectives as well. So hope that's helpful. Um, I'll see you in my next video. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.